defensive line, you know, had a lot of injuries last year, but it paid off in being dealt a depth built this year. What do you like about your depth, and, and how deep can you guys go? Well, I think, you know, um, that's, that's important on any SEC football team is having some depth inside. Um, I think right now, we, you know, we've got five or six guys we feel like that are going to be able to help us in a game, and um, that's so important because the more guys you can play, uh, the harder they can go, and, and the more guys you can roll in at an offensive line that doesn't sub as much, so it can be a big-time advantage. Are Kobe and JJ back in practice yet? Kobe uh, is, is, is playing, uh, is in practice, uh, doing, doing his thing, doing a nice job for us. Uh, JK's out there, uh, so we're getting, we're getting good looks from them. You mentioned five or six guys that you feel like can help you right now. Who are those guys and kind of who do you hope to bring along? Well, you know, everybody in, in my room right now, um, you know, it's early. It's just four practices in. Uh, we hadn't had an opportunity to put full pads on. We'll see that tomorrow. But, you know, everybody in that room is uh, competing for a spot. You know, you got Javon Kinlaw. You got uh, Kobe Smith. Uh, you got uh, Zach Pickens, you got Rick Sandage, we got Devontae Davis, we got Gentry. I mean, we got a, n a number of guys uh, in that room that are all competing and vying for a spot. So hopefully you get it. To, it's a luxury if you can get all of them uh, where they're able to come in and help you and compete uh, inside. Sorry. Uh, where have you seen Zach take kind of the most steps taking the spring practice and sort of putting that to use? Well, I tell you what, uh, we were talking about the other day, he's doing a really good job just mentally uh, compared to where he was in the spring uh, coming in the fall camp mentally. He's he's doing a really nice job, and he's playing faster. So that's a great sign that mentally he's getting this assignment because once you know your assignment, you can play fast. So he's playing a lot faster. We're still working hard on his technique, uh, as we are with all of them, but that will continue to come. The more reps you get, the muscle memory, you understand what we're trying to get accomplished. But I've been uh, very pleased so far with where he is mentally compared to where he was in the spring. John, it seems like not a lot of people are talking about DJ Wanham because he was hurt a lot of last year. But what can he bring to this line? And what can he bring to you know, an all-conference kind of season? I think, I think DJ Wanham is a really good player. He's a special guy. Uh, he's got – he can set the edge for us. He can rush the passer. You know, I was with the Jets for two years, and when I look at his body type, I look at his athleticism, he was better than some of the guys. I felt like that we had up there. I think he's got a lot of potential. He could be special for us. You get Javon on the field now. You didn't get him in the spring. Just what's it, what's it like to have him on the field? Uh, it makes you, makes you smile as a coach. Uh, just a guy that big, and uh, Javon is physical. Uh, he's a tough-minded guy, and I like the way he practices. He practices hard. Uh, he came into camp in shape, and so he's moving around well. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure when you have a guy that can be disruptive like that and play the way you want him to play. And, uh, you know, he and Kobe are doing a really good job for us inside of, like, leading the other guys of how to practice, the techniques, uh, the assignments, and getting off a of block. So, I mean, having a guy like that inside the way he's playing has been really uh, valuable for my room. Based off what you've seen from him in film, what, what do you believe is the next step for Javon? Well, you know, we, we talk about it all the time is just being consistent in everything you do, uh, at being consistent in your technique, being consistent in just a great effort all the time, just being consistent and, and doing it the right way all the time. I think for everybody, that's what we're working on. But, you know, if it, we get to that point and he's consistent like that all the time, we'll, 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 have, we'll be in good shape. John, how does that compare physically to other first-year freshmen you've coached? at this level? Well, you know, um, he, for me personally, some of the places that I've been, um, he's got really, really good size and strength for a freshman coming in. You know, uh, he's got like a, a junior body right now as a freshman. So that certainly helps. So for him, you know, just developing um, the mental part and that's coming. I feel like he's doing a good job with that. And now um, just getting the technique down and playing fast all the time and he's playing faster. Uh, I, I think he's got a chance to really, really help us uh, this year, but we got to keep coming on. He's, he's going to have a chance to help us. Do you like him with his hand in the dirt or do you like him as kind of that stand up pass rusher like DJ? I, I, I like him with his hand in the dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Vaughn, how much do you sense he's motivated by the NFL draft and that this is um, a contract year for him in some, to some degree? Well, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's what, if that's what just um, 
motivates Yvonne. I know one of the things that Coach Muschamp's message has been and my message in my room, one of my preseason camps, is be where your feet are. And so your feet right now here at the University of South Carolina, let's have a great senior year. Because if you have a great senior year and, 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 and we, we do great things here, all of that other stuff will happen. It'll come like it's supposed to. So I don't know if he's focusing on that. I think he's focusing on doing something they haven't done here in a long time and being an extremely dominant guy for this football team and uh, in this conference. So I think that's more where his goals are this year, which is the right goals to have. As you kind of head into year one, is there a certain stamp or a certain identity you want to put on this defensive line in this defensive line room? You know, the, the, the thing that, you know, uh, from being a coach and, uh, you know, the way I played and brought up, I, I like to, you know, put my stamp on. We're going to be a hardworking group. I was a blue-collar player, try to be a blue-collar mentality and have, a, have, a, have that degree of toughness and reliability. We're going to do our job and we're going to make plays. So that's what I want to leave on this group. And, you know, we're, we're going that way. You know, we're learning how to work, but I want us to be the toughest group we can be. I, I talk to those guys all the time about we're the core of the defense, okay? And you're only as strong as your core. So we have to be tough. We've got to be strong. So if anything, I want to make us a tough, strong-minded group, tough physical group. You talked about Juan on the what you've seen from him and compared him to your time with the Jets. What, what about Kimmel? Because his name pops up more than anybody else. What are his qualities that are attractive to NFL teams? Well, you know, um, there's not many 6'6", six, six, you know, 300-plus pound guys that uh, have his athleticism, and he's really strong. And he's got something that only God can give you, extremely long arms, so he can separate off blockers uh, with quick twitch. I mean, you know, if you, if you had to draw up, the type, the body type for that league. I mean, that's the body type. You know, you know. Uh, with my time with the Jets, we had Leonard Williams, six six, three hundred and ten pound guy with that type of athleticism. I mean, those are the type body types that you draw up. This offensive game has changed a lot over the last couple of years with the ball getting a little bit quicker. Is that changed how you teach? defensive line technique for you guys? And what are some traits that you look for in a defensive lineman nowadays compared to when you started? Well, it, it, it certainly changed a little bit more with the offensive uh, going to more RPO stuff, mm -hmm. run pass stuff. So, you know, your rush has changed a little bit because now, you know, you're getting pass rush off of play action now. You get more play action just about on every snap. So, you know, you got to teach the guys to really convert. Uh, and, and get to a pass rush move. So that's changed it a little bit. It's no more the traditional seven step drop. And you know, you get the typical protections you get with that. So everything is more RPO. So you're looking for guys that can convert from run to pass, quick twitch that can get off blocks, long arms that, you know, sometimes you're not going to get to the quarterback because it's coming out. But if he's got long arms, he can get his arms up and bat a ball down. I mean, that's just as good as a sack nowadays, too, with the RPOs going. So, you know, I, in my opinion, and in this, in this league, you want guys with long arms that can extend and get off blocks. So it's kind of changed a little bit. Do you emphasize more of the batted ball, or do you emphasize is the stack sack still as emphasized? You know, as obviously, you, if you want a sack, you, th that's great. But sometimes you're just not going to get there. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's going to look one time. Oh, it's passed, and then all you can do is put your hands in the throwing window. A batted ball is good. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's just give or take. You know, you get more, you get a little bit more traditional third down stuff. You know, third down, but first and ten, it's it's all RPO. It's transitioning from run to pass all, in every every snap. You mentioned Kobe Smith as kind of being a leader. When he talks to us, he's kind of a quieter guy. But what are the kind of the qualities behind the scenes and in your room that sort of make him that? Well, number one, um, Kobe, the way he practices, you know, we've had, we're four days in and we've said something about him every day as a defensive staff as doing things the right way or playing blocks the right way, you know, or, or taking on a double team. I mean, that's that's one of the most unselfish plays that helps your football team. He had a, several of those yesterday, teach tech, you know. Mm -hmm. So doing those type of things, and now you got the younger guys like Zach and Rick and looking at that picture and that model of how we want to be. Uh, you know, I went and looked at his notebook yesterday, and he's one of the most descriptive guys I've seen drawing it up, saying what you say word for word, and just taking notes, and I showed it to the young guys. Take a look at this. This is how you take notes. So just, I think he may not be the most vocal guy, but he does a nice job of leading by example, leading by taking notes, leading by how he practices. So, you know, I, I think that's what, sometimes one of the most effective ways to lead. It's not what you say, it's what you do and how you act. Is Brad Johnson 
Johnson close to being a significant contributor? Um, you know. You know, I, I think Brad will help us. Uh, you know, when, when, he, uh, when he when he gets going, um, he's he's more with Coach P than he is with me. So I think he'll help us um, going down the line. Rick Sandage, what, what kind of progress have you seen out of him? What do you expect from him? You know, uh, Rick, second year in the program. You know, played early on. You know, we're we're all anticipating him. Uh, being being a great factor in what we do, you know, he's got that experience. Uh, Rick is is a strong physical kid, and so we're we're going to need him. We're gonna, we're going to need Rick. So I mean, we have high expectations for Rick and and Zach and that whole group. You know, the more depth we can have, the better we're going to be. What style of player is Devontae Davis? What, what stands out about his game, the way he plays? You know, um, Devontae is, is a is a young man that can be a. Uh, he can be a physical guy. Uh, he's strong in his lower body. Uh, he's he's one of those guys you just got to continue uh, to 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 learn the game a little bit and uh, knock a little bit of the rust off. And he's doing that. So I think once he once he gets it more, uh, continue getting it mentally and working on the technique. Uh, but he's got some core strength there too, to him as well. Did you sense he kind of hit the ground running? Coming in for bowl practice, I know you weren't with the team during bowl practice, but he was kind of a little bit further along than a few other newcomers after he got those couple practices. Yeah, that that certainly helped. He had a little bit more. Uh, he had more of a comfort level than say a Zach or one of those guys coming in the spring because he had already heard it once. So I think any time, the more you can hear it, uh, the more it helps you. So, but like now, you know, again, it's great that those guys get here early because now they know what to expect a little bit in the fall. That's it's always great. And I know in the spring we talked a little about a chunk, a, a early part of practice was three down, and then you switched over to four down stuff. Is there something like that during this practice, or is it just sort of all, all doing all of it kind of all, all the time? Well, we we you know we kind of do all of it all the time. Um, you know, like again, we want to be really multiple uh, when we go in the fall and, and be able to do either or. You know, what helps us the best that week. So we just kind of do a little bit of all, all of it. There's all kind of aspects in each of it. Is Jabari Ellis in your room? How does he fit in? Uh, Jabari Jabari is going to be a guy that can help us inside and out. Um, he's play he's playing inside and out for us. Uh, it, we, we've been pleased at how he made a he made a jump in the spring, and uh, he's continuing on that path in the fall. He's doing a nice job. How about Keir Thomas? Is he more inside or outside? He's another guy that's that is talented enough to to do both for us. Uh, we're we're excited about KT as well too. Be a good player for us. What do, what do you tell your guys? On the day, like today, when, when you go full pass tomorrow, what, what's sort of the message? Well, my, me my message to them was, okay, we improved on some things today, okay, but every day we got to come out and we got to get better. You're going to get stressed and challenged tomorrow. You know, one of our goals in our room was how well can we handle adversity. So tomorrow is going to be adverse. It's going to be adverse because it's going to be the tempo, it's going to be the heat, and it's going to be the physicality. How well are we going to adapt to that? So we got to come out and attack it. It's going to be really hot at 3.30, August 31st, you know, and so we got to condition our mind, our body. It doesn't matter how hot it is. It doesn't matter the tempo. I can, I can do my job. I can execute, and I can play at a high level. How different is that compared to the first couple of days when you guys are just in shells? And well, 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 you know, it, it's just uh, we were joking about it yesterday, but it's like when you put shoulder pads on, some guys get pad anxiety, you know. It's just it's just a different mindset because now you're doing different things. There's different drills that you add to it. But, you know, it, 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 again, it's a mindset, you know. It, it, it really should be no different than how it is in helmets, and that's where you got to get to. It doesn't matter what we're in. I'm going to go out. I'm going to practice at a high level. I'm going to do my job. How's recruiting going for you? How do you feel like you've gotten adjusted to recruiting for South Carolina? You have some in-state ties already. Um, you know, it's it's going well. You know, luckily when I got here, we were already on on some some guys, and uh, you know, being able to jump in from that point has been good. Uh, you know, we we've done a. Uh, it's it's been nice getting back in the state. Uh, a lot of the guys. Uh, that I already knew from recruiting the state at other parts, or some some coaches were even coaches when I was playing back in high school, so they remembered me. So that's been that's been an easy transition, uh, transitioning back in the state heavily, and even in the North Carolina too. I know a lot of those guys. You mentioned having sort of a lot of options and a lot of guys who can sort of move inside and out. Is is there a process by where you sort of I guess par down the um, 
par down sort of the options when you start going into game week and, and figuring out who plays where, who plays when, who plays how much, or is a little more free, free flowing, free form, I guess? Well, I, I think part of the option part of that is, you know, versus certain teams, you might want to do different things. You might need a different body type at one spot. Mm -hmm. So that when we say options, that's, that's kind of where I'm going with that. We have the ability because guys mentally and physically can handle doing that, uh, of, of getting the matchups that we need best for our football team. And so that's kind of where I'm going with that. So you're right, you know, it may, you may do this one week and then the next week may, we may have you doing something else based on what we need or what we see, which is a good, uh, good, something really good to have. Gives you some flexibility. I know you're focused on your guys, but in the time that you've been here, what do you, what do you see from an, 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 Eric, oh, an Eric Wolford offensive line? Oh, man, <laughs> that guy, he, he's an intense guy. Um, he coaches them the right way. Uh, as far as just like aggressive, you know, uh, Wolf could have very easily been a D-line coach, just his mentality and how he coaches those guys to be physical. I love going against his guys every day because I know if we can handle uh, their double teams and those combo blocks, we can handle them for uh, people we're going to see because the way he teaches it and the physicality, uh, that's exactly what we need and that's exactly what I want as a D-line coach, uh, the way we practice up front. You know, to, in my opinion, we can't get enough of that stuff. That's how you get physical. That's how you get really good up front on both sides. Yes, we've heard a lot from players about their schedule, like during camp. I think they're in at six thirty, leaving them. What's a coach's schedule like during this? What time do you get in the facility and leave? Uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. You know, we get here super, super early, and uh, you know we're the last ones to leave the building. Uh, so. And, and you and you do it day after day after day after day. You just you know you just get used to it. Like most times, we don't even know what day it is. Yeah, no. You know, somebody said something to me. Oh, we're having uh, the chaplain come in. I was like, why are we having him come in? What's today? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't realize it was Sunday. Right. You know, so you just get you just get in the grind. You know, it's the same schedule every day, but, I mean, you're here from sun up to sundown late, but that's a part of the grind. I mean, that's that's what you enjoy about it. Any coaches? I know players sleep here during camp. Do coaches do that? Or is it you, know, you know what? I don't know if any coaches sleep here. Um, I want, I, I've heard a couple of players have. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. They'll take naps during breaks, too. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't know if any coaches do. How much, on average, how, much, how many hours of sleep you get? Well, you know, um, I haven't found any time during the day. I'm always working, but uh, you know, you try to you try to get five or six hours of sleep and get get used to doing that. You know, that's and that's about what you get during the season. I mean, about the only time you get any sleep is um, I, I, I think on road games. Right. You know, when you get to the hotel, but outside of that, you just get used to operating off less sleep because you're, you're busy all the time. Coach, have you seen Joe Anderson come along since spring ball and yeah. the summer? Yeah, Joe. Joe is coming along. He's, he did. He had a uh, had a had a good summer. Uh, his body's starting to fill out physically, and uh, you know um, he, he's doing a nice job. And I think I think we've seen him grow uh, mentally. He's grown physically, and um, he's starting to get it. Starting to come along for us.